All right, the next topic is gonna be bleeding less than 20 weeks. Our first step in a patient that comes in with bleeding less than 20 weeks is going to be a speculum examination. And basically we want to do the speculum to rule out vaginal or cervical lesions. Now we're gonna diagnose this based on whether the cervix is closed or whether the cervix is open. If the cervix is open, our next step is going to be a DNC with emergency suction. DNC is actually the most common first trimester abortion procedure and it's usually performed before 13 weeks. Um, but in this case, if the cervix is open and the ble they're bleeding uh, less than 20 weeks, we are going to do a DNC and emergency suction. And if the cervix is open, we're gonna make a diagnosis of incomplete abortion or inevitable abortion. Now incomplete abortion is gonna be evacuation of some of the tissue while some is still going to be retained by the uterine cavity. An inevitable abortion is going to be when there's vaginal bleeding, lower abdominal cramps that may radiate to the back, the perineum, and a dilated cervix. So if there's vaginal bleeding, lower abdominal cramps, and it radiates to the back and the perineum, along with the dilated cervix, I want you to think of inevitable abortion. And if an ultrasound is done, it's going to show a ruptured or collapsed gestational sac with the absence of fetal cardiac movement. Um, incomplete and in inevitable abortion for the most part are gonna present the same, except that in incomplete abortion, there's incomplete evacuation of the conceptus and ultrasound is gonna reveal endometrial debris. Now, if the cervix is closed and the patient is bleeding less than 20 weeks, we're gonna do the first, uh, our first step is gonna be a speculum exam and then we're gonna do a vaginal ultrasound. Basically, once we do this vaginal ultrasound, if there is an intrauterine pregnancy, it's gonna be a threatened abortion. So a threatened abortion, the definition is any hemorrhage that occurs before the 20th week of gestation with a live fetus. So if the cervix is closed and there's a live fetus and there's bleeding less than 20 weeks, that's going to be a threatened abortion. There's going to be no passage of the fetal tissue. So as opposed to incomplete and inevitable abortion where the cervix is open and there is passage of the fetal tissue, when the cervix is closed and there's an intrauterine pregnancy before the uh, 20th week with bleeding and there's a live fetix, fetus, um, it's a threatened abortion and we're just going to do bed rest. If it shows a snowstorm pattern, what we're going to do is we're going to have diagnosed a molar pregnancy and we're going to do a DNC and we're going to follow up with beta HCG quantitatively in the serum because we want to follow this um, to make sure it doesn't progress to a choriocarcinoma. Now, if there's no intrauterine pregnancy on vaginal ultrasound, there's no molar pregnancy and there's no ectopic pregnancy. After the vaginal ultrasound, if we don't see any of this, we're gonna do a quantitative beta HCG. And basically on the quantitative beta HCG, if the level of beta HCG is less than 1500, we're going to wait two days and we're gonna do a repeat beta HCG plus an ultrasound. And if the beta HCG is over 1500, we've made our diagnosis of ectopic. So if it's less than 1500, we're gonna wait two days and repeat the beta HCG and do an ultrasound. If it's over 1500 and there's no intrauterine pregnancy on ultrasound, no molar or ectopic pregnancy, we're gonna do a beta HCG. If it's over 1500, it's gonna make a diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy. Now, there's two types of ectopic pregnancy, both ruptured and unruptured. Ruptured is going to give you symptoms um, similar to that of acute abdomen, and the patient is going to have an increased heart rate, decreased blood pressure, along with guarding and rigidity, just like you see in acute abdomen, and your treatment is gonna be an immediate laparotomy or salpingectomy, salpingectomy, okay? And an unruptured is just gonna present with amenorrhea, bleeding, and unilateral pain. And basically, in this patient, what we're gonna do is we want to do a salpingostomy. 
Now, a lot of people think that we're going to um, do a, a methotrexate, but with methotrexate, you're going to have to have certain criteria. So just remember an unruptured um, ectopic pregnancy with amenorrhea, bleeding, and unilateral pain, the patient's going to get a salpingostomy, okay? And um, in, if it's ruptured, the patient's actually going to get a salpingectomy. Now, why aren't we doing methotrexate? Because with methotrexate, we're going to have to have certain criteria. And that criteria is going to be, it's going to have to be less than 3.5 centimeters. The beta HCG is going to have to be less than 6,000. There has to be no fetal cardiac activity. And usually these first three, we can meet the criteria, but there also has to be no history of folic acid supplementation. And that's the only way we can give methotrexate. If they meet all this criteria, which is usually rare, we're going to follow up with beta uh, with serial beta HCGs to ensure there's pregnancy resolution. We're also going to do the same thing with salpingostomy. Uh, we're going to follow up with serial beta HCG to ensure pregnancy resolution. So, quick review: um, If a patient comes in bleeding less than 20 weeks, we're first going to do a speculum exam to rule out vaginal or cervical lesions. If the cervix is open, it's going to be either an incomplete or an inevitable abortion. We're going to do a DNC and emergency suction. If the cervix is closed, it can either be a threatened abortion, molar, pregnancy, or ectopic. If it's intrauterine pregnancy and the, the live fetus is threatened, we're going to just do bed rest. If there's a snowstorm pattern, it's molar, we're going to do DNC and follow the beta HCG. If there's no uh, on vaginal ultrasound, if there's no intrauterine pregnancy, no molar or ectopic pregnancy, we're going to do a quantitative beta HCG. Less than 1,500, we're going to wait two days and repeat. Over 1,500, it's going to be an ectopic. In the unruptured, we're going to do a salpingostomine. And in the ruptured, we're going to do a, a laparotomy with salpingectomy. And methotrexate only if we meet this criteria. And both of them, we're going to follow serial beta HCGs to ensure pregnancy resolution and this is uh this is your algorithm for bleeding less than 20 weeks